and then and uh, Uwe um, studied in Bonn. Huh? Astro right. Astrophysics. Yeah. So he's a professional astrophysicist, and he worked then for several years in Uli. Uh, then he worked in industry yeah. at the research lab of NEC, Japanese computer company. And in 2007, he became not professor of astrophysics, professor of mathematics at the University of Applied Sciences in Koblenz. And he's been there ever since. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And um, uh, and today he will speak about uh, classification problems. Yeah? Yes. With mm -hmm. interesting applications. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Okay. So the webinar is sorted out and. Yeah. yeah the only thing is that we cannot see your screen. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you see something like a screen now? Uh, okay. I didn't share it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good point. So I should share my complete screen. Let me just check. Uh, you see, uh, you see some paper of yes, yeah, yeah. We, we could see something. Yes, for writing. So this should be for writing, and uh, now you should. I hope I will find Chrome. Yeah. Now you should. See. See the actual, uh, see the actual slides, right? Yes, I, I'm not sure that it's completely reflected because we could see in the bottom only your name. Ah, okay, now it's completely yes, it's fully at least for me. Yeah, yeah it seems to have some hiccups. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, there are some uh, room overlays inside. I hope these do disturb, don't disturb too much, but I see them here as well. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Francesco, for the introduction and for the uh, invitation. Um, um, it's my first time here, and it's my very first talk in a tea room. Um, and on top, it's an African tea room, so I'm very happy uh, that I uh, could, could give this talk. Um, this is uh, um, pretty elementary uh, stuff. So I, I will talk about a very simple complex uh, valued uh, a uh, very simple complex valued uh, perceptrons. Um, and this is a co cooperation with my colleague Babette Gellen, um, who is also a professor of, um, at, at the same university. So I am. Uh, she's in, in uh, working biomathematics, and I'm coming originally uh, from computational finance. That was the, re the reason of, of, of them uh, to hire, hire me. Um, and we have some uh, projects together with, with much more complicated uh, net networks um, um, using the standard uh, uh, deep networks, yeah, convolutional uh, um, deep networks, so trying also to do some anomaly detection in, in uh, pictures and so on. Um, yeah, and what I will, uh, but, but we uh, got got interested in some uh, tricks one could do if we uh, use complex values in, uh, in in neural networks. We didn't invent complex values in uh, neural networks. There are some applications in signal processing, um, but uh, usually they use more or less the same. Uh, the same activations as everybody uses in deep learning, uh, like these ReLU, ReLU activations or sigmoid functions uh, that you probably probably have heard of. Um, and I will talk today about really, really simple uh, classification problems, um, but, but there were some surprises for us. Um, uh, and and the, the motivation is going back very, uh, to, to the beginnings of neural networks. Um, everything started with, or as I probably have to adapt uh, the uh, size now and then, every now and then. Um, I see something in the chat. Um, um, Ilya, will you uh, tell me when something interesting happens in the chat or if I should? Uh, okay, just somebody is complaining that there is no sound, but my sound is perfect, so I suggest that the person just log out and log in or check his sound settings. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry to hear that. Okay, but um, uh, there's probably nothing we can do at the 
with uh, started with uh, linear separate separable problems. Now, here you see some orange dots and some blue dots. I call them class A, class B. Uh, uh, let's say for simplicity, these uh, these are distinguishing uh, healthy patients, which are orange, and uh, sick patients that are marked in blue. Yeah? These are maybe two parameters like uh, blood pressure or insulin levels. And uh, you know, so tendentially we'll have a, a, a high blood pressure is bad and a high insulin level is also bad or, or high blood sugar level is also bad. Yeah, so uh, th there will be some uh, separation and, and, and there are certainly some combinations where intermediate or a somewhat high and a somewhat uh, uh, somewhat high blood pressure and somewhat high in, uh, blood sugar level is not a good thing. And, yeah, and, and it's reasonable uh, to assume that there will be a, a, a decision boundary separating these. Yeah? And, uh, and this is basically the idea of the linear perceptron. Yeah? You, you uh, plus, this has only two parameters in principle or three parameters. Um, a normal vector to this decision boundary, which is linear, yeah, you know, and that's why it's called linear uh, separation um, or linearly separable because there's a, a, um, a, hyper a hyperplane that separates uh, one class from the other. Yeah? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know why this happens. Okay. Sorry, uh, it was uh, made for another uh, monitor side. And... Excuse me, I have to get rid of the window. Oh. <laughs> this is supposed to be already full screen. <laughs> I cannot go full full screen. Um, Okay, so and the, the origin goes back to uh, the 1940s. Yeah, actually, uh, in 1943, there's, uh, there was this paper by McCullough and Pitts. Um, and this uh, linear perceptron, uh, um, it's sometimes called McCullough Pitts neuron or a single layer perceptron. Um, and it was, I'm not completely sure, but probably uh, reinvented by, or uh, uh, and, and at least uh, discussed. I don't don't know whether it wasn't, but was aware of the McCullough and Pitts work. Um, so the first one was in mathematical biophysics, and the other one in psychological review. Um, and this uh, Wolven blood paper is from 1958. Yeah, and the the idea is just what I said. Uh, you. Take the input vector, this two-dimensional vector. It could also be a three or four or one hundred dimensional. Um, you multiply it with a, a weight vector, which is actually yeah, what is the interpretation of the weight vector? The weight vector is, is the normal vector yeah, of, of this uh, separating hyperplane. Um, and then you check if this uh, if the scalar product is larger than the threshold value B. Yeah, and this uh, um, you know, depending on that. Uh, you say this patient is sick or uh, a new incoming patient, uh, you can plus classify him as, as sick or healthy, probably. Um, um, there's another uh, parameter, this uh, threshold value B, which you would also have to learn. Uh, and the, um, the simplest neural networks just are using this algorithm. Yeah, you, uh, you start with a random vector and then you can improve this vector by Today is usually done by stochastic gradient uh, search, but um, yeah, th there are also other uh, algorithms leading to a uh, to solution of this problem. So um, yeah, but uh, there is one problem, one well, well known problem, and this was uh, formulated first by uh, Minsky and Puppet probably in 1969, maybe uh, earlier, that um, that not all functions are linearly separ separable. Yeah? Um, not all classification problems. And a, a very simple classification problem is not linearly separable, uh, namely the uh, X, learning the XOR function. Yeah? This wouldn't work with uh, this because you, uh, however you uh, uh, design your plane, can I comment this? Um, uh, uh, 
let me try if I can. Uh, no, it, it will probably go, go wrong. You see that, uh, ah, uh, you will not find a, a hyperplane that, uh, that separates uh, one class from the other. Yeah. So um, wh whatever your hyperplane is, sorry, I just want to make this invisible again. Um, whatever your hyperplane is, uh, there, there will be uh, always on, on one side of the hyperplane, there will be a, um, a blue and, a, and an orange data data point. Yeah? So this is not linearly linear, linear, linear separable. Okay. Um, let me try to get rid of this again. Okay. The starting point of, uh, of Babette and myself and uh, Babette uh, told me, um, uh, actually, we can solve it if, if we modify this uh, idea a little bit. <laughs> and uh, her first idea was a little bit different, but uh, what, what is um, what, what we uh, basically uh, found it's, uh, yeah, of course, it's quite obvious in that then uh, after after you find the solution, um, uh, we take the absolute value um, of omega uh, of w times x as the activation function, and we see uh, we look whether the absolute value is larger or smaller than than a threshold. Now, this sounds like a trivial um, uh, thing. Uh, actually, yeah, it, it actually is a trivial thing. Um, but you, you may see that this is um, um, can solve actually be the problem. Yeah? Let's assume you have this. Uh, uh, you connect the uh, yellow. Uh, sorry, this uh, example problem. We didn't want to have only four data points. Uh, we uh, uh, tried to modify a, a little bit to, to make it a little bit more interesting. We have a, a number of data points that are not. Uh, um, exactly zero or one yeah. we say uh, one corresponds to logical true and uh, zero corresponds to logical false and we want uh, uh, let, let's assume um, this the the, the uh, number or the, this figure is just um, um, a voltage yeah for instance one volt would correspond uh, like in a in a semiconductor one volt would correspond to true, zero volt uh, would correspond to, uh, to false, and uh, there's some uncertainty yeah? so, uh, or some, some noise added to it. Uh, so, so the actual true value might may be, and this is a, a realistic uh, assumption for depending on the circuit, of course, uh, a, a, a true value may be actually between 0 0.8 and 1.2 or 0 0.7 or 1.3 or so, something like that. Yeah, and we uh, wanted to learn the uh, um, the logical function XOR from these uh, noisy input data. Yeah, and um, the idea then was we take the absolute activation of uh, uh, wait times the input vector. So X is this two-dimensional input vector, X1, X2. It's a pity that I cannot... Can't move this outside. Um, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm underlining this. Uh, um, as I told you, W can be interpreted as the uh, um, normal vector. And let, now let's find a plane, uh, a hyperplane that connects uh, the, the centers of the uh, of of these yellow dots. And then uh, the absolute value of uh, what is the absolute value of uh, w times x? It's the distance to the uh, to this hyperplane. Yeah? And then we get uh, uh, one distance here, one distance here, and uh, by that we can separate uh, these values. So, so that, that's uh, basically the simple idea. Yeah? But that's original idea was a bit more complicated. But after <laughs> afterwards, it, it was very simple. Um, and we try to uh, do this. Yeah, and uh, of course this works. Um, it, it, it must work because uh, if you set false to zero and true to one, uh, 
you can easily see x or you can express it by uh, uh, standard arithmetics. Um, x or if uh, x1 at x2, so the exclusive or, yeah, not, not both are true, but one of them are uh, is true. One of the input variables is, is true. Uh, then x or is true if and only if one of only one of the input variables is true. Yeah? Um, and this is just the different, the absolute value of the uh, of the difference. Yeah? So um, actually, this shows that there must be a solution uh, uh, that, that this will be a, a solution. Yeah? Um, and uh, so the neural network, if, if we interpret this as a neural network and uh, put this into one of these frameworks or do it manually, um, um, if we regard it as a neural network that learns these parameters, so the, the distance parameter and the uh, normal vector um, that can be learned using stochastic gra gradient or other algorithms, um, then it would, uh, would find weights and the weights, because they are real, they are abbreviated R here, um, it, it should find uh, weights so this can be plus minus one or and this uh, should be minus plus one yeah uh, there, there are actually two solutions because of the absolute value you can reverse the signs huh? um so um and actually if you uh, try, try to implement it in a, as a neural network you, you will find yes of course this works um but it does not always work um because um, so at least if you train it with a stochastic gradient de descent, because there are two other local minima. Yeah. Um, ah, okay, sorry, it's on this slide actually, so I have to reduce it a little bit again. Yeah, and uh, so the local minima are the uh, here in these dark dark regions. So here's a uh, oh, sorry, this is the absolute minimum. Yeah, so um, at at minus minus one and plus one and then there's uh, here there's another absolute minimum at uh, one minus one but there are also a local minima here at uh, 1.5 and 0 0.5 and and, and reflected here um, and uh, if you do it with a practical uh, neural network then you will find that this will not converge yeah and as i told you babette and i are interested in uh, uh, complex uh, valued neural networks, you know, which are a, a little bit more exotic, um, but uh, for, for instance, PyTorch supports since I think two years, uh, complex valued neural, neural networks and everything works smoothly. So we, we did uh, quite a lot of work with PyTorch. And of course, this can be done in, uh, in Python manually with a few hundred lines, uh, a few, few 10 lines, but uh, um, for other purpose and to, to be able to embed it in, in more complex networks, we uh, use this PyTorch framework. Um, yeah, and uh, actually it's possible to solve this problem um, using a, a, a network with, with complex weights. Yeah? So, um, what, and, and in fact, we, what I will focus on uh, uh, is a solution with ju just uh, using complex phases. Yeah? So we take the input vectors for, for logical functions, at least this uh, should work. We take the logical input vectors um, and multiply them with uh, e to the to one phase and subtract e to the uh, to one phase alpha. Oh, sorry, this should be alpha two, of course. Um, the second one, uh, alpha two uh, times x x2 yeah and of, of course you see actually uh because we take the absolute value uh you could uh factor out e to the minus uh, e to the alpha one for instance and then you get just the, the phase difference so actually one phase would do um for other uh, reasons um so what what you are usually doing is uh you can also add a um th this is a linear function Wx is a linear function, but you may want to make it affine for other, uh, yes, to add a, a bias. Um, and, and for that purpose, we uh, left uh, this uh, second parameter. Yeah? But actually, you, you uh, could uh, get away with only one parameter in this case. Um, and 
yeah, if, if you uh, try to adapt it, then you find that it has an, an infinite number of equi equivalent solutions. And uh, uh, that the stochastic gradient descent algorithm uh, is guaranteed to converge to a valid solution. Yeah? I will not show you the proof it's all, because it's as simple as it is boring. Um, but um, I show you the, the the reason. So, what is the, the landscape? If you uh, write write on the loss function for uh, let's say perfect four perfect input data, the per four perfect in input data, the loss function looks something uh, like like this. Yeah, and and you see um, because it's a phase, you have this peri periodicity. Yeah, so, so everything here in this valley is actually um, a, a solution. Yeah, um, and it doesn't matter because uh, so along this line, this is just the dependence on the on the global phase, you know, which is uh, not that interesting. Um, uh, so this a uh, global phase that we could factor out, but but it, it doesn't matter for the solution. Yeah, so the, uh, um, every network uh, getting one of these solutions will give the same same output. Yeah, and just to show you that this actually works and uh, and this uh, this gu uh, guarantee convergence that actually does work. Uh, here's just the the output. Um, we have our uh, this is the loss after uh, um, after training. You um, you see it's not uh, converging very rapidly, but it 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 works. Yeah, um, and. Uh, after after a short time, it comes to, to a solution, and and this uh, color actually here shows uh, the uh, the classification. Yeah? So all yellow dots are in one class, so that um, uh, these are uh, true in this case, and the dark dots are false values. Yeah, so, so they, that's the, the output of the of the function, and uh, the cl uh, classification problem has has been solved in in this case. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, and uh, why are we so excited about phases? It's just, just one side remark. Phases are really, really important. Um, for instance, if Okay. Good to know. Um, you you are back. Yep. Good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, connection was broken, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the connection breaks down. Yeah. Okay, but Ilya is uh, here by Zoom, so I am confident that. Yes, 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 yes. Now, now, now you're connected. But you are not sharing the. Can you share? Uh, yeah, thanks. How can I share? Where's my Zoom men? Zoom, you click on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, okay, so probably nobody has. It's behind. We cannot, we, we still could not see your screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's one problem with my. Hmm? 
Ah, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's chat again. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so, uh, can uh, can you go back to the and repeat where you started with the um, gentleman with the camera? Okay, yeah. So back to the gentleman with the camera. I think that's where. Yeah, I mean this one, but before you do the face game. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I have to. Okay. Here we go. Yes, this one. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. We we have a photo, and then the, the idea is uh, we make a Fourier transform of this uh, photograph, and you know may know that uh, in an image uh, that's the basis of Im image compression uh, that, that uh, many of the Fourier co coefficients are very small and you can just uh, throw them away um, contains certain information but the phase also uh, contains a role and this uh, oh, internet connection is unstable I see um, and this role may, may be very very important because um, when we try to reconstruct the image from the Fourier coefficients, but in, in the first case, only by uh, looking at, at the amplitudes, you know, we, we set the phases to zero and take the amplitudes and uh, make the Fourier transform. And in the other case, uh, we set all amplitudes to an arbitrary value, could be the average or could be one. and the, um, and uh, regard only the phase, phases, yeah? And uh, what you get from the reconstruction is this picture. Huh? So the uh, reconstruction of by amplitudes only, where you forget about the phases, uh, seems to show no information about the picture at all. Yeah? You see some, uh, uh, you, you see uh, that uh, these, uh, yeah, that, that this um, uh, part of the mount seems to be shifted somewhat and uh, you know when you know Fourier transforms you know that a phase is a basically a shift yeah so that's no wonder that it seems to be shifted but uh, yeah, so the the information is all over uh, the wrong place yeah but uh, but the uh, phase inform uh, information from the phase information you can see at least something yeah you see the buildings you can identify that this is a human being and uh, maybe you can even see if you zoom inside uh, that, that this is a camera uh, that's good. Let me zoom in into this. Okay, zooming doesn't work. Um, yeah, so, so uh, we have some applications in mind where uh, uh, phases may be important, and that's what, what I also wanted to uh, talk about with Francesco because phases are e extremely important in, in quantum mechanics. And we wonder whether one could use this in in um, in uh, quantum computing as well. But uh, to our uh, surprise, uh, we, we can do much more with this complex value activation. Um, and so first, we were completely surprised. But, but uh, um, if we if we make it complex, um, this allows the uh, separation of also. Uh, elliptically controlled boundaries, which is the nonlinear, uh, so one of the classical nonlinear classification problems, and one of the problems that you would solve with uh, kernel based methods. Yeah, and uh, um, keep in mind that we have only two neur neurons, yeah? two weight. Uh, every neuron co corresponds in this linear perception a weight, uh, corresponds to a weight. And we have only two weights. In this uh, uh, extremely primitive uh, neural network, and then we 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 need to learn also the, the bound the width of the boundary. That's why we need a, a third um, a third neur neuron. And but actually we would only need two because I sh I uh, I told you that we only need one of the phase shift because of this absolute value. Um, but uh, let's say let's be generous and we have uh, uh, only two neurons. 
And uh, this is an extremely sparse uh, representation. So I admit this is an extremely simple stuff, but uh, uh, we have a, a very sparse representation here. Um, and the, the competitor would be kernel-based methods, for instance, yeah? support vector machine. Um, I will not talk about support vector machines, but uh, what support vector machines do is uh, they um, um, Uh, um, okay, maybe I, I just explain it later when I when when I get uh, some show you have shown you some examples from that. Um, so this is an extremely uh, I, I think this is the simplest network I know that can uh, can do this uh, uh, non uh, this uh, separation of elliptical contours, and it's actually the same network that we use to uh, for learning the uh, this XOR function. Um, and uh, uh, actually, I think what I will show you will uh, train both phase and amplitude. Um, if you restrict it to a phase, you can still um, uh, still separate uh, circular boundaries, huh? not elliptical, but uh, but circular boundaries. And this uh, extremely simple neural network can then perform pretty different tasks of uh, separate uh, learning all binary functions of two variables from noisy data. Now, as I showed you, it's not only the XOR, but you can, can uh, easily show that you can learn every possible binary function of, of two input data. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a simple example. You can uh, uh, go higher dimensions. Yeah. Um, of course, it can also do uh, this linear separation task. Yeah. Um, uh, what that, uh, how, how can it do this? Uh, we, we can discuss. I will show you show you one example, and it can uh, cope with arbitrary elliptical boundaries. Uh, the same network, and you don't have to uh, to do a trans transformation in space, which is basically what the kernel based uh, methods would be doing. Um, and I just want to show you some uh, some examples of that. Yeah. So, so here here's this. Uh, uh, these are the contour lines of the uh, distance to this hyper hyperplane. Yeah? So uh, here we have, have learned this. Um, uh, uh, so the normal vector would be something like this. This would be the, the W that would have been learned. And uh, if it was real, it can actually find the real solution in modulo uh, uh, an arbitrary phase. Uh, and this is the distance to the hyperplane. And you see, off, uh, if I'm um, off by more than a certain uh, threshold, then it's uh, true, and otherwise it's false. Yeah. Um, and then let me just um, maybe we do this in the original notebook. I can. With small, uh, let me show you some uh, slight modifications. With the the, the, uh, the code, now, let's assume we. Oh, sorry, wrong example. Let me go again. Um, uh, usually, uh, this stochastic gradient descent. There's uh, and, and you have to initialize your neural network. Uh, let's. Uh, I just want to show you uh, one thing. Um, of course, you know. Uh, well, you will know that the, the solution is not unique. Yeah. The, the, because we can also flip the signs, and this happens. I, I played with it yesterday. Uh, this happens, for instance, if we uh, set the seed variable to one forty-two. Um, so it's learning now. Um, sorry, I don't know how why it took so, so long, but uh, yeah. you see uh, it's now going in, into the other di di direction. Huh? Um, so it depends on, on, on the seed variable, but, but of course, uh, it, it, uh, both solutions of the, uh, of the learning problems are, are uh, valid. And just to show you that, that you can learn also other functions, let's, let's say we want to learn a, a NAND function. So logical NAND, 
Now, th th that would be a, a linear separable, a linearly separable. This is just an example that we can also solve linearly separable problems. And you see, uh, it just makes the boundary big enough to uh, to cover all the all data. Yeah? The, this the trick. Why uh, this is not weaker than uh, than normally uh, than than a standard linear perceptron. It can do everything that, that a linear perceptron can do, but but it can do also more. And um, yeah, logic lands, yeah, the negation of an end. So it's true uh, if and only if not all of uh, the input variables are true. Yeah. But isn't that a problem? We have green area in the corner there. No, 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 it's it's not. It would be a problem if we had uh, input data which are uh, if we had outliers. Yeah. Then it, uh, you're right. Then it would become a problem. Yeah. So we uh, we should be sure that uh, our data are. Um, good enough. Yeah, yeah that, that's. So, if for example, had a problem where there is some problem in the experiment and we got artificial units up in the retreat where the white was up. Yeah. So, what happens then? Yeah, then, uh, yeah, that's bad luck. Like, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, th th this can always happen with. Uh, um, uh, th then, of course, uh, the linear perception would be the winner, yeah, because it has uh, fewer assumptions. Yeah. I, it's it's uh, less flexible, but uh, yeah, in, in this case, we could not. Uh, uh, the, the linear perception would have an adva advantage. Yeah. Okay. I, I admit this. This is an advantage. If you have outliers, then um, you may be, it, it may be better uh, to use a, a, a perception. Yeah? But, but that's, I think that's always true. Yeah. The fewer parameters you have to fit, the better. Uh, if, if you can get away with it, then fine. Yeah? You should uh, take a, a model as simple as possible. Yeah, and and uh, now uh, another binary function of x x uh, one and x two would be just x one. Yeah, um, and th they are show that that you don't even for a linear separable, it does not uh, always choose um, um, a linear uh, function. Um, so let me take, say, the target will be x1. Okay. So it just takes the, uh, this disregards the second argument and takes only the first argument. What will be the uh, output then? Sorry, I should. Just wanted to make sure that it converges, so I accelerated it a bit. Yeah, so, so actually, uh, it finds oh, this looks like an. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it, it could. That, that's by chance. If I choose a, another another input, I, usually uh, it it uh, chooses. I don't know why it happened here, in but I found this interesting. For, uh, 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 in this case, an elliptical separation or a kind of circular uh, shape boundary that would also separate the, the, the data. Yeah, so that's that's fine. Again, uh, it's also more dangerous. Yeah, I, I admit. Yeah, in this case, uh, maybe the support vector machine would uh, would try to to uh, get as much space between the boundary as as possible. Yeah, so. Um, so for robustness, uh, that, that may, might be a uh, uh, not not so good feature. feature but uh, so it's not perfect this network. But uh, just wanted to show this because I found this interesting. Huh? And uh, now let's uh, take one. Let's get this one back to the X or and uh, ah sorry. Um, I just wanted to show you one example where we actually have a. Um, um, just have to set this to something else but uh, logical. Um, I just wanted to show you what, what comes out when I uh, actually use um, data that are separated by, uh, by uh, an elliptical boundary. And then it looks like this. Uh, I don't know. I planned it to plot as uh, the, uh, anyhow, you, you, you see the idea. <laughs> Um, so uh, all all points, uh, all white points are uh, classified correctly in this cell. So um, in this case, these were the healthy, or uh, yeah, let's say the healthy patients and other other 
uh, and the green dots are the uh, sick patients. Huh? So that's um, an interesting modification. And I, uh, I would like to emphasize that, that this works only in, uh, uh, works only with complex values. So the, so the complex values are essential here yeah? because, uh, so why are they essential? Uh, because, uh, sorry, this is not the best choice. So um, we x um, squared equals uh, uh, le less or equal uh, whether I swear it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is equivalent uh, for real numbers. This is equivalent to W X um, 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 yeah, a square less or um, uh, less than one. Yeah, and you, you see that uh, these are uh, uh, equality. You have only always at two. Um, uh, straight lines, yeah? or th these will always be uh, two hyperplanes. Whatever you do, yeah. But in uh, uh, for uh, for complex data, uh, things look different. Yeah? For, for instance, uh, let's say the weight vector is one i uh, times x y yeah? um, squared. Yeah? So, so this is uh, um, x. Uh, plus i y times x minus i y, yeah? and so this x squared uh, plus y squared equals to no, or let's uh, so, so this is circle. No, um, so it depends crucially on on the fact that the that the, the, that the weights are um, are complex. Uh, the, the, the trick that wouldn't work for for real data. So now my Chrome is lost again. Okay, now something has happened here to the So um, let me come to a, a conclusion and outlook. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, we got, got interested in this. Uh, what, what can we do when we um, modify, uh, modify the networks and the uh, activation functions and uh, found also some other interesting uh, applications in which, into which I cannot uh, go today, but um, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk about that uh, later. Um, so one thing we are interested in is anomaly de detection with these uh, complex networks. And what we did there is um, regarding the, comp uh, the um, uh, let me uh, say uh, what, what is the application that we have in mind that's uh, a near false detection. And this is a hot, uh, pretty hot topic uh, in, in, uh, in uh, health sciences. Uh, you know that uh, the Apple smartwatch can uh, uh, detect whether you have fallen and call for help. Yeah, but but what what's um, what may be even more important is uh, to monitor situations where you are close to a fall. Yeah? Uh, when you're slipping, or for instance, for elderly people, falling is one of the, the of the major problems, causing uh, a lot of health problems. And uh, we also have a, a collaboration with a. Um, uh, with a um, hospital where we are, uh, want to, this is just an ongoing uh, a proposal actually uh, currently reviewed under review. Um, we want to monitor uh, um, sick patients to, to get uh, some information from, from, uh, from the gates about the, their diagnosis and, and the prognosis. 
Um, and so what we did here is uh, make a person walk and then uh, we, had, uh, um, we had, a, had a nice parkour. Maybe I can show it uh, to you. Um, let me see if I find it immediately. That you can see what is the situation. Sorry, I hate PowerPoint. How how do I start? <laughs> um, oh, okay. So. Um, here we go. Yeah. So this is a situation: there's a person walking, and then we have this horrible <laughs> installation to make this person uh, slip. Yeah. So this is. Uh, yeah. So there, there are several tracks and they are opened electronically. It's, it's a horrible device <laughs> by a sadistic colleague. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, oh, for some reason, <laughs> you don't see the same. Uh, I, I have to stop this uh, presentation, right? So that's the idea. Uh, so, and, and what we did here is uh, uh, to equip the, the person with a motion sensor and to learn uh, what is normal motion. Uh, so, so this is uh, not on the parkour, but it's, it's a different uh, situation. We are training for, for a certain time. What is a normal step? And uh, then we are predicting what will be the, the next uh, stage. Yeah, so, so we read out the acceleration sensors and then uh, try to predict what will be the next readout of the acceleration sensor and depending whether it's uh, okay or not we say uh, yeah everything is fine this would be uh, this normal level and uh, hit hit an alarm uh, raise an alarm when uh, there's an anomaly and you see that uh, this actually and it, it's not hard to see uh, exactly from the from the time series um, uh, we found that it's it's really uh, very sensitive and uh, um, so we hope that we can get uh, make some progress in the field of uh, near false detection, which is a, um, a very interesting um, and, and relevant uh, problem at the moment. Um, yeah, so, so let me briefly summarize. So um, the Um, so what we see is uh, that, that uh, a linear perceptron, that, that's, that's the original idea, but just uh, modifying the idea that, uh, that we can have, uh, that, that we use the absolute value of, of this, uh, so basically the distance to a hyperplane, that this can solve the XOR problem. Um, and to our surprise, uh, the complex uh, function can also um, it, it's pretty uh, pr pretty uh, uh, flexible. In a way, you can uh, still regard this then as a distance to a hyper uh, to a subspace, but in this case, it's, it's a one-dimensional subspace distance to a point. Then it's it's, it's uh, becoming a line. Yeah? And the uh, normal activation, if you find a hyper uh, separating hyperplanes, uh, then it's linear. Huh? Um, so with uh, only two. Uh, maybe uh, uh, actually these are two complex neurons and one doing some kind of bureaucracy um, with, with, with only three neurons actually uh, in some cases you can get away with one um, you can solve uh, these these problems L learning all possible binary functions from noisy data uh, you can classify uh, classes with circular or elliptical decision boundaries and you uh, use a very small number of neurons. Now, also, in the thing I showed you with, about near force detection, 
um, we found that we uh, get away with a, a very small number of neurons and that we may be able to train uh, um, uh, to do the monitoring on very weak hardware. Yeah, so so uh, you don't need, need uh, many hardware resources to use this um, algorithm. And uh, yeah, the training can even be reduced to uh, training phases, complex phases in some cases. Um, while the real valued uh, version can get stuck in local minima. Yeah? So um, some of, of the ideas we had in, uh, in, uh, for uh, near false detection were already used in, uh, in, in the past, but people found that uh, they don't converge. And we have some, some hope that um, yeah, in, in the complex plan, you always have a possibility to get around uh, a local minima. We hope that this will help us uh, with uh, we are not sure, but we hope that, that, that this will help us to uh, uh, to improve the training strategies. Yeah? And uh, then it's also nice that we have guaranteed convergence for um, for the phase for the case of the phase training. And um, with some extensions, we um, are on the way to uh, to establish some useful applications in an anomaly detection. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for your attention, and um, I'm happy to answer questions if there are any.